many times have you said there's not enough hours in the day? All right, Karma Brown's The 4% Fix promises to show us all how to find time without sacrificing our other commitments. And Karma Brown joins us now. Karma, nice to see you. Morning. Morning. Nice to see you as well. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. First off, uh, what exactly do you mean by the 4% fix? The 4% fix is really looking at your 24 hour day. And so 4% is one hour of your day. So this book and this concept is about finding this one extra hour uh, because time is such a commodity and we really can't mess with it, right? We have 24 hours. So we're looking for 4% of that day that we can use for something that we've always wanted to do but never thought we'd have the time for. Okay, and you have some do's and don'ts when it comes to time management and getting that 4% fix. First do, set an alarm for the hour that works in your schedule. Yes, and I will say that I'm advocating for an early morning wake up here. So this hour needs to be guilt free. It also needs to be free of all those other responsibilities that you have. And waking up early, if you're not used to waking up early, is not easy. You can't do it without an alarm. So set an alarm to make sure, like that's the first part of the habit in making sure that you are awake. Um, if you can't do it in the morning, don't, you don't need to worry about the alarm, but you know, you're looking for this time that can be guilt-free, that can be just yours. And, but if it is going to be at 5 a.m., I would recommend at least one alarm, but ignore snooze. Snooze is not <laughs> your friend here. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you say uh, don't just start waking up at 5 a.m. just like tomorrow. You got to ease into it a little bit. Yeah, because if you I mean, it's like running a marathon. If I tie my shoes on and I go outside and I'm running my 42 kilometers somewhere, probably around 5K, I start to fade and I won't make it. So what you really need to do is start small. If you're a 7 a.m. wake up person and you want to try to find this sort of magic hour in the morning, getting up at 5 a.m. means you sort of have to go to bed two hours earlier, which is really tough. So you need to work in small increments. You get up maybe 15 minutes earlier, and then at the other end, you have to get yourself to bed 15 minutes earlier as well. Otherwise, you'll be sleep deprived, and that is not what this is about. We don't need to be I, more sleep deprived than we already are. I hear you, and I've always found it so much easier to go to bed earlier than to wake up earlier. I don't know why that is, <laughs> but... <laughs> All right. Your next do is do prepare. Yes. So again, I mean, along with the alarm, there are other things that you can do to make sure that you can be successful with this time that is yours, you know, that no one else gets to have. I like to think of it as like a 24 slice cake. You've got, you know, one hour represents each slice of cake. And if you don't give yourself that slice of cake, everyone loves cake, you end up with no cake and everyone else gets the cake. So preparation is to make sure that you can be successful in whether it's early in the morning or at the end of your day. Uh, for me, for example, I get up to write in the morning at five and I make sure my coffee is set the night before. I make sure I know where I am in my story so I can just sit down and get right back into the rhythm of it. All right, and you say don't spend this hour on productivity. What do you exactly mean by that? Well, I mean, it's not for work. So this is not the hour that you're like, oh, I'm getting up at 5 a.m. and I'm tackling my to-do list today so that I feel like, you know, really productive about it. That, that can be something that feels good. And maybe you do that one day a week. But this hour is not about work. It's about doing that thing that you're curious about, that you have some passion for, that you didn't necessarily think that you would ever find time in that commoditized 24 hours to do. So, you know, it's not about the do list. It's not about being productive. It's about uh, investing in yourself by giving yourself that time. And that actually leads into our next do, which is find a good reason to get out of bed. If you know you're just going to, you know, in self-indulge, then that might be, I mean, smelling, you say you set the coffee pot, smelling that coffee can be good enough, kind it of. Can. <laughs> it depends on how much you love coffee. I am a big fan. So even knowing the coffee is brewing just allows me to get my feet on the floor and get out of bed. Um, you know, this is why I say snooze is just, 
it is it is the devil in this scenario because it's so tempting to snooze but if you do that you're you're then fighting against this time you start to lose the time and it does need to be something that you feel excited enough about that you don't want to hit snooze that you're able to get your feet on the floor and get to it so you know that's why a to-do list is never going to be that thing right no one's super excited to jump out of bed and get tackling their to-dos yeah, absolutely. And you say don't let distractions deter your focus as well, right? Yes. And when I first started doing this, I did not do this uh, on my own. I This was not my choice. So I had a baby who never slept and a toddler who never slept. And so we were up at 4 a.m. doing all sorts of things, crafts and watching Dora the Explorer. And I eventually had to find a way to use that time for myself because I was going to be awake. And so really it is about, you know, figuring out how to avoid some of those distractions. I set up a Play-Doh station for my kid and it gave me some time to do that. But you want to create a bit of a bubble around your time and protect it the best way that you can. It's amazing how Dora isn't as cute at 4 a.m., right? <laughs> oh, speak for there. yourself, Carolyn right. You haven't been there, MacArthur. Oh, yeah, no, I'm there. actually going to get up an hour early just to do Play-Doh. I'm going to set up my own Play-Doh <laughs> station. That's it's awesome. fun. fun. <laughs> All right, finally, do write down your goals and trust the process. Yes, and so one of the things I started doing is looking at what my day is, what's important to me in a day. And I call it the focused four in the book. And what it is is a, a, a four categories. So I use family, productivity, creativity, and health and wellness. And I look at each one of those categories and I think of one thing that I'd like to do in my day that fits in with my priorities, my values, for that particular category. Like for me, I'm right now trying to learn to meditate. So that fits into my health and wellness category for the day. And if you're a, a type A nerd and you like to-do lists, which I do, it gives you something to check off, but it also allows you to stay really focused on your priorities and using All your right. time as best you can. Okay, the 4% fix is available now from Karma Brown. Karma, thank you.